Johnny Dollar. Jerry Holland, Johnny. Tri-Mutual Insurance Limited. Oh, sure, Jerry. How are you? The name Curtis Randall mean anything to you? Uh, the banker here in Hartford? That's the one. He's also one of our big policyholders. At least he was. Oh, what's happened to him? Day before yesterday. He and a friend of his, a fellow named Byron Peters. They went deer hunting over near Kingman, New York. And? They hired some old character in the neighborhood to act as guide. Randall and Peters didn't know it, but the old goat was an alcoholic. So what happened? At the end of the day's hunt, they raised cane with Curly because he hadn't found him a deer. Curly, the name of the guide, huh? Yeah. They had a big argument. Over 500,000. 100. Wow. Who's Randall's beneficiary? His hunting companion, Peters. Peters? No wonder you want me to investigate. Johnny. Only this one looks too easy. Wait, Johnny. I'll be right over. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, Act One of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri Mutual Insurance Company Limited, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the hapless Hunter matter. Expense account item one, 95 cents for a taxi across town to Tri Mutual in the office of Jerry Holland. As they opened the door, he met me halfway. Hey, what was the idea of hanging up on me, Johnny? Then when hanging I tried up? to call you back, you'd left. Well, sure. I figured if this thing only happened a day or so ago, the faster I could get working on it, the better. Well, I'll go along with you on that, but Where's now... this man Peters? In the hospital. Because if anybody should be suspect, he's short. After all, as a beneficiary... What did you say? I tried to tell you on the phone, only you hung up. Byron Peters is in the hospital. Where? Over in Kingman, New York. Why? Because he was shot up, too, by that drunken guide when he tried to prevent him from killing Randall. Oh. Then Curly killed himself. Yeah. You know, if you'd stop going off half-cocked, you might get somewhere on this case. If it really is a case. <laughs> Sorry, I, I guess I jumped to a conclusion you before. sure did. Oh, half a million is still a lot of money. Sure it is. If you need it. And Byron Peters doesn't? Well, according to the local police chief who called me, it was in Byron Peters' brand new El Dorado that they drove over to Kingman. It was Peters who arranged for the guide service. It oh. was he who supplied the guns and equipment. Yeah, okay, was... okay, Jerry, I'll take your word for it. What hospital is he in over there? Angel of Mercy, it's the only one. Any other information I ought to have? Mm, none that I can give you. As I told you, this is just routine because of the money involved, company policy. Of course, for your report, you might try to find out if this old Curly Summers, the guy, had any reason to have it in for Randall. Randall knew him before, huh? Uh-huh. I thought you said Peters arranged for the guy. Oh, I guess I did. But now, Johnny... Let me have Peters' home address, will you? And Randall's. Well, sure, why not? And I hope you don't think... Did you know Randall well? Yes. Was he a drinking man? Oh, one martini before Denny, that's all. There you are. Why? How about Peters? Oh, I don't know. What difference would it make? Oh, just, uh, wondered. Don't kid me, Johnny. You've got something up your sleeve. Why, Jerry... Now, now, what is it? You know something about these people that I don't? Not a thing, so help me. But 500000 is a lot of money. And I tell you that if you suspect Byron Peters, you're crazy. Did I say I still suspect But the him? way you've been talking. Did I? Well, no. Well, I do. <laughs> Sure, with so little to go on, I had no reason at all to suspect Peters. Except for a hunch. But hunches have paid off for me more than once. Expense account item 2380, a tank full of gas for the drive across Route 6 to the New York State Line. There I picked up 9W, then 212 to Kingman. I found the Angel of Mercy Hospital on the way into town. The chief resident physician, Dr. Matthews, was completely cooperative and of no help whatsoever. Quite pointless to see him at the moment, Mr. Dollar. Oh, what do you mean, Doctor? Mr. Peters is sleeping under sedation. Oh? I'm afraid the ordeal with the police left him quite exhausted. The police have already seen and questioned him? Yes, and they had no business questioning him so long in view of his condition. Uh, shock, you know. Uh, tell me something. Do they suspect that he killed Mr. Randall, too, then wounded himself for an alibi? You mean that you do? Yeah. 
Do they? Oh, my boy, you must be joking. Of course not. Oh? Why not? Whether you realize it or not, and you will, if I permit you to see him, Mr. Peters, see the manner in which he was wounded, see the extent of his wound. I'll realize what? Oh, my boy, I... Uh, I asked you a question, Doctor. You will realize how impossible it would have been for him to shoot himself in that fashion, how narrowly he himself escaped death at the hands of that rum-crazed guide. You're sure, Doctor? Of course I'm sure, and so are the police. Well, where does that leave me? If I may say so, with egg on your face. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the hapless hunter matter. A hunting guide had run amok near the little town of Kingman, New York. And according to report, was responsible for the death by shooting of wealthy banker Curtis Randall for the wounding of Randall's companion, Byron Peters. But Peters is beneficiary of Randall's half-million-dollar insurance policy. So, naturally, the old bug of suspicion began to gnaw away at the back of my brain. Until, that is, I saw Peters, his wounds, the x-rays, and finally talked with Captain McManus at the local police headquarters. Well, sure, we talked to Peters, Mr. Dollar, but only to find out exactly what happened when old Curly went off his rocker and started spraying lead with his hunting rifle, then shot himself. Then my suspicion that Peters might have done the shooting... Well, didn't you see how Mr. Peters was hit by that 30-30? Now, look... He saw Curly pull the rifle on Mr. Randall and shoot him down. Yeah. Yeah, so he lunged at Curly like this. Yeah. Curly whirled around, pulled the trigger. Yeah. Well, the x-rays I saw. Sure. Well, then you know. When Peters lunged at him, the bullet creased his head from the top, went right through the muscles in the back of his left shoulder, and landed in the floor. So it's pretty obvious that Peters couldn't have shot himself. Well, it's impossible. He would have had to have arms five or six feet long to shoot himself on the top of the head at that angle. Hey, when did you first learn about this whole thing, Captain? When Mr. Peters came to, he phoned me from up at Curly's cabin where it happened. I went up there right away. And? Curly and Randall were dead. Peters was still lying next to the fireplace where he'd fallen. But if he was able to phone you... He pulled the phone over to him by the cord. Still had a good right hand, you know. Oh, I see. Where were Randall and Curly? Randall by the front door with a bullet in the back of his head. Curly lay between them. Just how much do you know about this Curly character? Well, that's the part I don't understand. Why he did it. I heard he was an alcoholic. Sure, he was a town drunk in a harmless sort of a way, except when he'd go off on a rampage and get into a fight or two, but never during hunting season. Uh Uh-huh. Well, uh, what did he do? Mm, Odd jobs of any kind, most anything. People had always refused to pay him until the job was done. To make sure he'd stay sober, huh? Well, at least reasonably sober. And just as soon as he got paid, he'd buy a lot of cheap whiskey and hole up in his cabin. That's where the murder occurred. Except, yes, except during hunting season. Then he'd never touch it. Oh, he was a good guide, Mr. Dollar. He made a lot of money from the people who came up from New York City and Hartford and such. That's the part I don't understand. His hitting the bottle during the season. Well, did he ever have any trouble with his clients before? Oh, he'd bellyache about them being so rich when he was so poor, that sort of thing. But he'd have to get awfully drunk to... Uh, I swear I don't understand it. Uh, well, look, Captain, I'd like to see the bodies of Mr. Randall and Curly. Are they still hereabouts? Still over at the coroner's office. Then let's go, huh? I wasn't quite sure what I was looking for. Maybe that's the reason I found it. At least found something that started that old suspicion bug gnawing away again. Peter's back at the hospital had had a bad powder burn on his forehead next to where the bullet had creased him. Okay. He had said that Curly the guide pulled the trigger when he lunged at him. Randall, there at the coroner's office, had no powder burns. Okay. It was apparent that he had been shot from across the room. But Curly, who was supposed to have shot himself upward through the jaw, also showed no sign of powder burn. Sure, the bullet hole indicated he could have shot himself by holding the gun at arm's length. A 30-30 is fairly short. But no powder burn. I said nothing of this to Chief McManus. Well, it pretty much bears out what Peters told me and I told you, doesn't it? Curly shot Randall, then Peters, then himself. Captain, suppose, uh, just for the sake of argument, that Randall did the shooting. First, that is. Well, now, Mr. Dollar, say, wait, speaking of argument, Peters said that Randall and Curly had a pretty big one. Uh, You know, because Curly didn't find him any dare. 
That's when he started to get drunk and abusive. But as for Mr. Rand... On the other hand, suppose that Peters started the whole thing. Oh, now, look, you know that doesn't make any sense. Then try to kill himself? Well, isn't that what you're saying Curly did? Well, sure, but that's different. No good old bum realized he'd gone too far. There was no other way out for him. But a man like Peters, with money, everything he wants... Where is this cabin of Curly's? Huh? Quite a way. Ten, twelve miles. How do I get there? Straight down Pear Street to the mobile gas station. You know where that is? Yeah, I saw it on my way in. Okay, you turn left there. You go six miles. Uh-huh. Then take the first right-hand road right up the side of Deer Mountain until you get there. Okay. Oh, uh, here. Here's the key to it. Oh, good, thanks, Chief. I'll see you later. Uh, you want me to go along with you? No. According to you, this hunch of mine is all wrong. I'm sure of it. Okay, then. I'd better wing it alone. From the outside, Curly's cabin was a shack, nothing more. And there were enough cheap whiskey bottles scattered around the yard to sink a battleship. Inside, however, it was pretty comfortably fixed up. And back under the kitchen sink, I found a case of Prince Francis scotch, nearly full. (laughs) Had Curly suddenly changed his taste for the better? Or had somebody decided to bait him with it? By the dark stains on the floor, I could see where both Randall and Curly had fallen. Where Peters had gone down, there was also the rifle slug embedded in the floor. And then I noticed the angle at which that slug had ended, as though it had been fired from the ceiling, certainly from higher than any normal man could reach, and Curly was only five foot two or three. Then I saw something else, a heavy cord hanging down from one of the rafters above where Peters had lain. It was frayed at the end as though forcibly broken, Now, suppose someone had hung a loaded rifle there by the trigger so the slightest pull would set it off Had stood under it, holding the muzzle carefully next to his head to one side, just close enough to... Uh... Yeah, hello. Uh, Mr. Dollar? Captain? Yeah, listen. Now, you... uh, You may be right, though I still don't see how you can be. What do you mean? Look, I've... I've got Dr. Matthews at the hospital here on this party line. You still there, Doc? Right here, Chief. Well, then you better tell Mr. Dollar. Well, it's about Mr. Peters. Yeah? He's left. Left? I thought you had him under sedation. I guess it didn't take hold the way I thought it would. Well, what happened? Well, he woke up and asked me who it was that had been here to see him while he was drowsy. Did you tell him who I was? Yes, and he seemed to drop off again, so I left him. A few minutes later, I heard his big fancy car pulling away. Doctor. I went back to his room and he was gone. Doctor. Listen, Dollar. Yes, Chief. I don't know what it means any more than you do. But if I was you, I would get away from that isolated cabin. You see what I mean? Dollar? Uh, sure, Chief. I'll leave right away. That was very smart, Dollar. Byron Peters? That's right. Byron Peters. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the hapless hunter matter. So you weren't as badly hurt by that bullet as you pretended. That's right, Dollar. Does that help bear out your absurd suspicions about me? Not nearly so much as your coming up here to this cabin, Peters. What's that supposed to mean? You rigged the whole thing pretty well, but not well enough. Why you wanted to get rid of Curtis Randall, I don't know. You're out of your mind. Randall was a friend of mine. You must have had some reason for killing him. Curly Summers murdered Kurt. We had a big argument because he hadn't found us any game. The only reason it got out of hand was because Curly was drunk. On what? On some of that expensive scotch I found in the kitchen? How should I know? Yes. Where did he get that? How should I know? Well, I do. You brought it here to help bolster your phony alibi, to indicate that Curly had it up here, had been hitting it. But you pulled a boo-boo. Why don't you talk sense, detective? Are you trying to tell me Curly would ever have stuff like that? Look, look at the old bottles scattered around outside. Cheap rot got, that's all. What's more, he never touched a drop during hunting season. That's about as thin evidence as you could possibly dig up, Dollar, and you know it. Peters, why did you come up here just now? Okay, I'll tell you that, too. Lying there in the hospital, nursing your sore shoulder, you didn't plan on that injury, did you? I told the police. Oh, yeah, sure, you told the police. Lying there, you suddenly remember the one thing that could show how you cleverly wounded yourself after you killed Randall and Curly. 
That piece of cord up on the rafter, where you hung Curly's gun up by the trigger. Dollar. You aimed it carefully along the side of your head, then yanked on it to set it off. Dangerous, but a great alibi. I told the police, the doctor, Curly pulled that trigger when I lunged at him, struggled with him. Little Curly held that gun high enough so the bullet would crease your head from above? I was bent over, lunging at him. Then enter the floor from up here where this cord is hanging? <laughs> you're, you're pretty smart, aren't you, Dollar? Curly was supposed to have committed suicide, huh? Yes, he must have, because I heard him shoot himself as I passed out. Oh, sure. The bullet entered his lower jaw, went up into his brain. That's right. That meant he had to hold that 30-30 at arm's length. So, the muzzle right next to his jaw. That's right. Where it would have left powder burns. But, Peters, there were none. Because you shot him from across the room, the same as you did Randall. Yes, Yes, the same as I'll shoot you. If you can. My right hand is still good, Dollar, and so is the 38. You and your fool insurance company should have left things as they were. Chin up, Dollar. Tell me one thing. Sorry, I haven't got time. When I left the hospital, I made sure I was seen heading for New York and a carefully set up alibi. You still won't get away with it, you know, any more than you got away with killing Randall. I had until you came along, and I will when I've killed you. So if you have nothing more to say... One thing. Why did you kill Randall? You're trying to stall me. Why? All right. All right. Because I forced him to name me in his insurance. I was the only one who knew about some shady operations in his early business career. Oh, the old story, huh? That's right. Blackmail. That's why he's been paying me off, supporting me, until recently. So you threatened to expose him? No. What would that get me financially? Then tell me this. No. I've got to get out of here to New York. Just one now, thing look, more. I don't know why you're trying to stall me, but it's no use. So if you have any prayers, Dollar... Sure, sure that Chief McManus standing there in the doorway will slug you before you pull that trigger. Oh, no, not that old chestnut. Why not, Peter? What? You... Oh, oh, no, you... No. No. Doggone it, Dollar. I thought I told you on the phone to get out of here. Expense account total, including gas to get me back to Hartford, $13.13. .13. Remarks? Why? Why don't they ever learn? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.